On 14 June 1985, Robert Statham and five fellow U.S. Navy Seabee divers were flying back from a project in Greece, looking forward to seeing family and friends in the United States. The next day, Statham, a bullet in his head, was pushed out of the plane and died on the tarmac at the Beirut airport. Witnesses at the trial confessed hijacker Muhammad Ali Hamadi had been giving a Frankfurt court a gut-wrenching account of the slaying of the 23-year-old Maryland man who hoped to make a career in the Navy, but who became the only person killed in the hijacking of TWA Flight 847. The court has not ruled on the facts of the case, but the witnesses and official accounts have made possible a reconstruction of Seedham's last hours. Shortly after the Boeing 727 leaves Athens, some passengers hear a commotion from the rear of the jetliner as two Shiite Muslim gunmen run screaming down the aisle, brandishing a hand grenade and chrome-plated pistol. Americans die, come to die. Passenger Kurt Carlson hears the gunman shouting at the 145 passengers and eight crew members at about 10 a.m. Clinton Suggs, stationed in Norfolk, Virginia, wakes his Navy buddy, Steedham, from a short nap. This could be interesting, Steedham says. Steedham is dressed casually in a checkered shirt and slacks. He has traded in the long hair he sported at Thomas Stone High School in Waldorf, Maryland, near Washington, for the close-cropped haircut more suited to underwater welding. Hamadi and his accomplice, Hassan Ezzedine, quickly round up passports and single out the U.S. military personnel. The military men were hustled up to the first-class section where a language difficulty fueled Hamadi's notion that Steedham is a U.S. Marine and therefore the object of particular hate. <clears throat> Steedham is tied up with elastic baggage straps and the first in a long series of beatings begins. Sometimes they are just a few feet from pilot John Kostraki of Richmond, Missouri and the two other men in the cockpit. At one point, Steedham complains about his bonds and shout, It's too tight, it's too tight. Hamadi, who records show has just turned 21, responds, Let the pig suffer. Steedham's shouts are heard throughout the jetliner as it approaches the Beirut airport. One hijacker beats Steedham with an armrest torn from a seat, the sharp metal screws still pointing out. When Steedham collapses nearly unconscious, one of the hijackers jumps up and down on his ribs leaving his chest a mass of black and blue marks. Marine Marine, the tormentor scream, apparently recalling the U.S. Marine presence in Lebanon in 1983. They beat Steedham again after authorities at Beirut Airport delay refueling the airliner. Steedham, barely able to walk, is helped back to the coach section. That's when he meets up again with Ruth Henderson, an Australian teenager who chatted with Steedham at the Athens airport. Steedham is crying, Several ribs are broken, and one hand is completely numb as he sits next to the girl. Ruth helps Steedham eat because he is unable to feed himself. The unmarried diver, barely able to talk, tells Ruth he hopes that if anyone has to die, he will be the one, since his Navy buddies on the flight are all married. The plane heads to Algeria early that same Friday afternoon. After the four-hour flight, the hijackers savagely beat Army Reserve Officer Carlson of Rockford, Illinois, and leave him for dead during tense negotiation for more jet fuel. In the evening, the hijackers order the plane back to Beirut. Steedham is brought back to the front of the airplane, and the beating resumes. The plane lands early next morning, Saturday, 15 June 1985. When negotiations with the tower in Beirut erupt into a screaming match, one of the hijackers shouts, Get up, get up, to Steedham. His head leaves a huge red imprint of blood on the aircraft's side. Steedham and Suggs are bound and blindfolded. Sometime after 0230 in Beirut, the hijackers pull the curtain on the first class section. The stunned passengers and crew hear one shot, possibly more. When the bullet pierces his head behind the right ear and exit on the other side of his head, Steedham exhales so loudly the passengers and crew hear it above the whining of the jet engines. My God, they have shot someone, Chief Flight Attendant Uli Derrickson says. The hijackers toss Steedham, still moaning, out the passenger exit and down onto the runway where he lives for about 10 minutes. His body is taken to the morgue at American University Hospital in Beirut. Hamadi has denied pulling the trigger and said it was the work of his accomplice. 
but Steedham's supervisor, Navy diver Stuart Dahl, also stationed in Norfolk, Virginia, said Hamani gloated over the slain. He was proud of it, Dahl testified. He looked like the fox that got the chicken. He showed absolutely no remorse. Robert Steedham was born in Waterbury, Connecticut, but grew up in Virginia Beach, Virginia and Waldorf, Maryland. His father, Richard Steedham, retired from the Navy as a senior chief after 20 years. His mother, Patricia, also served in the Navy. His brother, Chief Bozen's mate, Kenneth Steedham, was a Navy SEAL. And his other brother, Patrick Steedham, a diver first class, served in the Underwater Construction Team 1 for 10 years, the same unit in which Robert served. Steedham had one sister, Cheryl. He graduated from Thomas Stone High School in 1980, where he played defensive back on the varsity and junior varsity football teams. Steedham joined the Navy shortly after graduating, and he reported for duty on 04 May 1981. The following are named after him. The Robert D. Steedham Memorial Sports Complex in Waldorf, Maryland. The Robert D. Steedham Education Center, a vocational school in Pomfret, Maryland. Robert D. Steedham Barracks, Training Support Center, Hampton Roads, Virginia Beach, Virginia. Steedham Memorial Navy Lodge, Navy Construction Battalion Center, Gulfport, Mississippi. Headquarters building and a street on the base, Port Hunami Naval Construction Training Center near Oxnard, California. And the guided missile destroyer, USS Steedham, DDG-63. An Aegis Arleigh Burke class destroyer, commissioned in 1995. Robert D. Steedham is buried in Arlington National Cemetery in Arlington County, Virginia. Section 59, Grave 430. He was posthumously awarded the Bronze Star, the Purple Heart, and an honorary promotion to Master Chief Constructionman.